I want to give you guys some of my thoughts on New Year's resolutions and fitness, which a lot of people really try to jump into pretty hardcore because you know it's the new year and the gym memberships go up and everyone's there for like three weeks to four, maybe five weeks, and then like everyone quits or they keep their membership, but they don't go. I asked for some straight up questions that you guys wanted answered about fitness. So first one, how do you keep going when you have time off to get back on it? Life isn't always, you know, up and down like a ladder. It's very circular, circular or cyclical in the sense that some days you're gonna go further, other days you're gonna go further back, some days you're gonna increase one thing in health and fall back on something else. If you're taking like several weeks off of doing nothing, your body's gonna start losing some of the gains that you made in the gym in regards to muscle building. But like anything, it's just you gotta commit to now going the other direction. So you will need to eat potentially less, you'll need to exercise potentially more, but give your body time to get used to the workouts again. Don't jump in 100% like you were if you took a month off. How many minutes a day do you exercise and for how many days do you exercise? Um, okay, again, this question, if it's in regards to my own personal plan, is not what I recommend for most people. Most people, fitness is not your job or your livelihood or tied to it in the same way it is for me. Again, doing stunts, being a personal trainer, an actor. I exercise today, what did I do? I think it was like, if you count my walk in the morning, I think I exercised for two hours. About an hour and 15 minutes of that was strength training, uh, you know, lifting weights. And then about 40 minutes or so was stretching because I do a lot of you know, kicks and flips and things where flexibility beyond the norm uh, is helpful. And then I went on a walk with Caitlin and Sonic this morning for about 15 minutes. So yeah, that's about two hours or so. Not every day is two hours. Some days are longer, some are less. For your average person though, I think, what is it, ACSM if I recall, um, recommends like 150 minutes of like moderate exercise intensity a week. But that's like the bare, bare minimum. If you're trying to lose weight, it could be double that, like 300 minutes. But it also depends on what you eat. Are you trying to get stronger? Are you trying to improve for a specific sport? So you gotta know what your goals are. How long should I spend on cardio per workout session? Great question. Again, it's gonna depend on your goals. Basically, there's an inverse correlation with how intense the exercise and how long the exercise is. So what I mean by that, like if you're sprinting as fast as you can on a treadmill, you don't need to do that for 30 minutes, nor will you be able to. So if you run really fast or hard, um, then you can train a shorter amount of time. But if you're going very, very slow, like almost walking, just slightly faster than walking, then I would do it longer, at least 30 minutes uh, a day, I would say, or broken up into three 10 minute segments. How can I balance health with actually looking fit? I don't want to just look fit. Great question. Um, the nice thing is if you look fit, um, chances are you might actually be fit on some level. That's not always true. Some people look in shape and they, they're not strong. I don't mean just skinny, but like if you look like you have muscle and a six pack and like your biceps are shredded and stuff, you probably are fit. So training, but if you mean like, how do I train for athletic movements and events, that can be different. So I train for power, which is basically moving explosively or from point A to point B as quickly as possible, at least with my legs, because that helps me with tumbling or sprinting, um, jumping higher. So I don't necessarily lift heavier weights with my lower body, but every movement on the up phase, so like if I'm back squatting, I'll go, uh, I'll go slow and controlled on the way down, but then I explode back to standing, um, even if it's a lighter weight, just getting my body used to training quick, to move quickly, because you, you adapt specifically to the demands you put on your body. So if I put explosive demands on my body, my body will learn to adapt to explosive movements. Same with my upper body, I tend to do a little more slow movements, a more muscular endurance, because handstands, it's a lot of endurance versus explosive movements in my shoulders. So I may do things a little bit more um, longer reps, less rest periods, um, that kind of thing, just to play with the different amounts. How can I lose weight? Because I think it is impossible. Um, well, it is not impossible. It is difficult though, because your body wants you typically to maintain whatever weight you were at your highest, because as a survival mechanism, storing calories, your body thinks is a good thing because it doesn't know when your next meal is coming. So it'd rather you store calories, but because we have a surplus of food in today's modern day, it's not always a good thing. It can actually be a very bad thing for your health to have too many extra um, you know, pounds on your body from fat because then it starts interfering with other health mechanisms. So 
I would say slow and steady. Um, a caloric deficit is how anyone loses weight, regardless if they, you know, have hormone imbalances or they feel like they don't have a lot of muscle on their body or they feel like they can never lose weight or they think they have a slow metabolism. It's all about finding a caloric deficit for you individually, whatever that means. So typically approximately a pound is 3,500 calories. Um, again, that changes depending on protein, carbs, and fats. I don't wanna to get too complicated with this though. So if you make a deficit of 500 calories a day, 500 times seven, that's roughly a pound a week. Again, this isn't set in stone, but it's a good place to start. You could also make a deficit of just 250 calories a day and lose about half a pound a week. I would do closer, depending on how much weight you need to lose. Um, as you get smaller, it becomes harder to lose weight just because you're starting to hit that point where you're really battling hunger in exchange for how much weight you're gonna lose quickly. So I would start, you know, maybe if the 500 calories feels too much, try to lose 300 calories a day um, or weekly to equal that pound or roughly around that, um, or even down to 250 calorie deficit a day. But again, talk to your doctor, make sure um, you don't have any pre-existing health conditions that would get in the way of you losing weight in a healthy manner. But trying to lose it all really quickly really doesn't tend to be healthy um, for most people. Best post-workout breakfast tips for protein breakfast. Uh, you can really, it's a uh, dealer's choice. You could do eggs, you can do sausage, you can do turkey bacon or normal bacon or chicken or beef, um, protein powder. You can just have a protein smoothie. Your body doesn't necessarily care as much as long as you're getting the protein versus what source it's from. There is some, you know, studies saying like, the bioavailability of protein is different depending on if it's from an egg or from cheese or from a nut or from whatever, like there's different sources. But by and large, what I found in my own experience, as long as I'm getting enough protein, that's like 95% of the battle. And then if you're like bodybuilding, you can focus on the other 5% if you're competing. But just for general health, just make sure you're getting enough protein, um, which I aim for about 30 to 40 grams of protein after a workout personally. The last question from you guys, best way to do weight slash resistance training when at home with no equipment. You can't really do weight training if you have no weights to lift unless you're gonna lift like water bottles or something, um, or you can pick up things around your house. But strength training does not require weights. I, in fact, did not lift weights for four years around the time I filmed Power Rangers Dino Charge, strictly did body weight training. Uh, if you think of weights, all they really are is enhanced gravity, like a 20 pound dumbbell versus a five pound dumbbell. They're both weights, but the 20 pounds will get you to exhaustion quicker than a five pound um, if you're strong enough to already lift the five. Yes, you can lift that five pound an extra, you know, 15 reps and you'll also get tired, which also has benefits. But if you want to only have to lift it, let's say 10 times to be tired to hit hypertrophy, then I would go a heavier weight. Now with body weight training, the way to increase the weight tends to be by manipulating the angle at which you perform the movements. So like a normal push-up becomes harder if you do like a decline push-up. You know, you put your feet on the couch and then your hands on the floor. Um, now there's more weight from gravity pushing you down at a 45 on your chest versus doing a push-up this way. So that's a way to make push-ups harder. Um, you know, you could do handstand push-ups uh, if you can't do a handstand, you can use the wall or you can just hit like a down dog from a yoga position and then just bend your elbows and then extend them with your head going towards the floor. You could do jump squats if normal squats are too easy. You could do one-legged squats if you want to make it harder. There's all these ways with body weight training to increase the difficulty one limb at a time or making it explosive or maybe you go really slow and controlled and instead of doing 20 push-ups, you do five, but like each one you take 30 seconds to lower and like 30 seconds to come back up which is really difficult. That's the nice thing about exercise. You can play with all these, vari all these variables to increase the intensity and to keep it from getting boring. You guys rock. God bless.